My understanding of the verb to bless is to make sure that the person is happy. God has blessed my family abundantly and I want to pay tribute to this God who, without a doubt, has been with me despite numerous challenges I went through and who, over time, has given me answers to my many questions. I was born in a Christian family. My father and my mother were converted in Algeria. It was during a meeting with the church pastors that I strongly felt called by God. The experience was so strong that I had to go to a secluded place to hide my emotions. The following year, God became really personal to me. I relied on Him for all my decisions. I talked to Him, I consulted Him for everything. At the time, I was dealing with the big questions one asked himself. Where do I come from? Is there a reason why I was born in this world? Is there a purpose in my life? What I understood is that our life has only a meaning when you are serving others. I was not yet 20 years old when I decided to go to the mission field. I contacted the conference office and it is only then that I realized that at my age, I had to go first to the military service, which was compulsory at the time. The first day I went to the army, my ID papers were stolen. It is only later on that I understood why God allowed that to happen. But to report my loss, I requested an appointment with the lieutenant. When I went into his office, I noticed on his desk a folder on which was marked a cross in red. Adventist. In my discussion with him, I told him that in the event of, of war, I would be useless because I was not going to carry a weapon to kill somebody else. But on the opposite, I would be most willing to serve as a medic in order to save people. I was surprised that he would listen to that kind of argument, but he did. He told me that he was sending me to Nantes to be trained as an assistant nurse. Of course, I saw God's hand in this experience. When I arrived at the barracks in Nantes, I had to receive a series of vaccines, despite the fact that I told the medical doctor that I was allergic to them, since during my childhood I developed strong reactions against them. The result was that a few days later, I fell into a coma. The army informed my parents that I had contacted meningitis and was under quarantine because I was very contagious and that there was very little hope of saving me. There were only two solutions to save me. Give me small amounts of antibiotics to limit kidney damage, which might result in brain damage. Or high quantities of antibiotics to save my brain but will probably damage my kidneys. My parents chose the second solution. I was healed from meningitis, but as expected, 30% of my kidneys were damaged. On my bed in the hospital, I couldn't help myself but thank my loving God, who had saved me a second time after having given his life for me on the cross. There, I dedicated my life to him in serving others. I finished my military service in April 1973. I was uh, one day driving on my mor motorcycle on a one-way lane when the car that was in front of me stopped suddenly. I hit the car from behind and did a spin wheel over it. When I opened my eyes, the first thing I saw was a beautiful clear sky full of stars. One of my brothers-in-law was holding my hands on one side and Another one doing the same on the other side. Well, I learned later on that they were driving in the same lane a few cars behind me and also going to church for choir practice. I started to wonder if I was ready to die. I was ready to go, but not to die. I was ready to go and I was convinced that God was leading me and I was so happy. After two hours in surgery and three months of re-education, my left knee was damaged for life. I realized that God saved me for a third time. Shortly after, I contacted the Adventist Volunteer Service, who told me that there was an opening as a builder in Africa. I agreed to go. I had to go through medical screening, and despite my kidneys and knee problems, the church gave me the green light to go. I was going to spend the next 14 years as a missionary in Africa first in the Republic of Central Africa, where I built the church, where I would be married a year later, then in the Cameroon, 
where I was going to spend the most beautiful years of my life at the University of Nangai Boku. Forty years after my first conversion, I still have the same emotions when I think of the love of God that has guided me as a loving father would do.